Hey guys, this is my Odroid HC4 ARM-based mini NAS. Now I've got it up and running and I've got a power supply connected. My last video, I did not have the power supply because this thing does not ship with a power supply. So I just did a quick unboxing video in my last video. For this video, we have it powered on and we're testing it out. So I picked this power supply up on Amazon. I think you can actually get it cheaper directly from the Odroid website. Um, so yeah, definitely, uh, if you want to know where you can pick that up, just check the link in the description. I'll have a link for the Odroid for these hard drives, which are extremely affordable. Um, also for the power adapter, for the monitor I have here to test it out. I have this Orange Pie monitor, and I'm also controlling it with this uh, mini keyboard. So if you want to know where to pick up any of these things, just check the links in the description. So I've got Ubuntu Mate installed on the SD card and I've, I've got it running with that with a GUI just to test this out. So we're going to test out its capabilities and check it out a little bit, but we're not going to be going with this OS. Um, eventually, so the real plan with this is to set this up as a NAS and we're going to use a different OS for that. But um, just to test it out, we have Ubuntu uh, Ubuntu Mate on here. So we're, we're going to take a look at a few things on the screen here in just a bit. But uh, that, that's the plan with this for today and uh, going forward, I guess. So, um, yeah, I've got the drives added and they're visible. You, you can actually see the devices for it. I haven't formatted them up yet and I haven't installed ZFS on them or anything yet. So what, what else here? Um, yeah, so I'm just going to show you a few things here. We can actually, the network is up and working. So I actually have this plugged into Ethernet. Um, I have an uh, so I have Ethernet, I have a little Bluetooth dongle for my mini keyboard, I've got the SD card here, HDMI, and power, right? So, any case, um, and this is, um, if you didn't see this in my previous video, this is all basically just one little single board computer inside this plastic case with drives mounted on it. So it's a pretty neat device, but uh, any case, it's on the network, um, came up with DHCP, and I am able to successfully SSH into it um, with no trouble. Now, um, the plan was to set this up with, uh, I was going to install ZFS and Samba on this. I was actually going to give it a shot with this, with Ubuntu Mate, just to, just to kind of, you know, get something working as a proof of concept, even though I'd kind of prefer another OS for, you know, to run as a server, um, to run a NAS as a server. I'd probably want to use something else without a GUI. But um, yeah, I was testing it out, and as it turns out, I had some trouble installing. I didn't even get as far as installing Samba. I had some trouble with ZFS. I had trouble getting the right system libraries from the repo for ZFS to work. And um, I, I spent a fair amount of time trying to troubleshoot it and get it to work, but eventually gave up and in favor of installing another OS um, that supports ZFS a little bit better. Uh, my, my best guess as to why that wasn't working is they just did not have the right header libraries for ZF, that ZFS requires um, in the repo for this. I, and I believe that to be the case. Anyways, there are uh, other people have reported uh, success with other operating systems. So that's what we're actually going to be doing. We're going to install another OS on this in yet another video. So I'm going to do another video um, showing you a, an alternate OS that I have yet to select. And I'm going to show you how I install ZFS on it, how I create the volumes. I'm going to create a mirrored volume and I'm going to share it with Samba, basically setting this up as a, a mini home NAS. So I'm going to show you how to do that in, a, in another future video with a, a different OS. But for now, we're just going to take a look at what you can do with this hardware just to give you a quick little demo, uh, just to poke around the system a little bit. So show you the specs, so show you a little bit about what you can do with uh, um, with, with this uh, system I have installed here right now. So um, let's see here. Um, we're going to start out with unit, you know what, before I even show you anything on the terminal, so let's see here. So I've, I've got my little, uh, mini keyboard here and let me, let me just move this to the side real quick and I'm going to actually pan the camera up and let's see here. All right. So that should be okay. It's, I, I've actually zoomed. So I have a few things open here. I have a terminal and I've zoomed it in. Actually, the glare is kind of bad. I might have to change the angle of my camera a bit. And uh, But I've zoomed in the text, so you should hopefully be able to read that. And uh, before I show you anything on the terminal, I'm going to show you the browser. So it comes with Firefox and it, you're, you're able to like browse the web and do normal desktop based stuff you might want to do. Like we're able to load YouTube. We can actually play YouTube videos and it's able to handle the video and all that stuff. So this is, you could use this as like a desktop PC. Like here's an ad playing. So you, you can see it basically 
you know, it basically works. You can uh, browse the web and stuff, do whatever you might want to do on, uh, yeah, do whatever you might want to do in a normal web browser. And, you know, basic desktop stuff, right? You can load Reddit, whatever, YouTube, whatever normal stuff you guys are into. Um, you could use this for, you, you, you know, like, uh, I don't know if it comes with, yeah, no, no GIMP by default. You can probably install it pretty easily. It comes with a bunch of default desktop software. So you could use this as a desktop system. If uh, you happen to want a desktop system where you can mount two drives like that, where you can have uh, two uh, SATA drives like this, um, th that's all fine and great. But really the reason I bought this as a, is uh, to be used as a NAS. So you could use this as a desktop. I'm going to be using it as a NAS. So any case here, um, Let's see. I've got the terminal open here. Let me see if I can turn the screen a little bit to get a little bit less glare. Um, I can only adjust my camera so much. All right, there we go. And I'm going to be running all of these commands um, using this keyboard. And, uh, you know, really, if you're going to use this as a desktop, you'd probably want to install use a real keyboard or if you're going to use it as a server you're going to ssh into it so that's when i ins when i set this up as a nas i'm mostly going to be sshing into it and doing everything through ssh for my desktop but uh any case if you're just testing something out or troubleshooting something or testing um you know single board computers raspberry pis and stuff like that it's really handy to have a keyboard like this and a monitor like this so yeah this keyboard and monitor are, are specifically for testing out spcs and stuff um, so they're different from the keyboard and monitor I have hooked up to my desktop. So in any case, I'm going to be running these all with this keyboard. It's a little bit more, a uh, little bit more clunky than using a real keyboard. But anyways, let's let's take a look at the system here real quick. So um, let's just do uname first. Uname. All right, and we we actually want to do uh, uname dash a, and we can get some system some info about our system. So it's Linux, Odroid, running a 4.9 kernel. Um, yeah, architecture is AA Arch 64. Yeah, so anyways, ARM-based CPU. Now, uh, let's see, next thing, let's just check Etsy issue to see a little bit about our OS. So let's cat slash uh, Etsy issue. So I'm a little slow typing with this, but it's it's definitely usable. And there we go. We have Ubuntu 20.04. So a little old, but uh, not too bad. And let's see here. So uptime. Let's just check the uptime. So I, I've had this thing running for a while. Um, I don't have the, I don't believe, yeah, I don't have the correct date on this. I think this might be using um, Greenwich Mean Time or something. I'm not, I'm not sure. But the, the, the time is off on this. Uh, in any case... It's been up for a little while, and let's see here. What else do we want to look at? So this is also going to tell us the load average. That's not too bad for a you know a desktop system. And let, let's let's just look at the CPU. So ls CPU. All right, and there we go. We can see we have an ARM based CPU, um, little Endian, you know, four four cores. Um, single thread per core, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, ARM-based Cortex A55. So that's the CPU we have. Now uh, let's check memory. So oh, let, let's just do this. Um, let's check uh, LS CPU. Let, let's see what output we get here. All right, so we can see the the cores listed there. So th those are the cores we have. Min, max, hertz. Okay. Anyways, uh, let's check memory. Free dash h all right so we see we got about four gigs or it's listed as uh 3.6 gigs uh you know 700 used so and we, we have this much free shared buffer cached and available so really the stuff that's buffered it's available to be used it's just being used as a cache temporarily while it's not in use but if we needed it we could use it so combined uh, you know, what's being buffered and cached with what's free, and that's your actual available RAM. Now, our used RAM is actually pretty high. Um, it, it, it's actually, I mean, it, that's pretty standard for a desktop system, but we were using, uh, we were checking, like when I checked the Tinkerboard, we're running LXDE, I think we were at like 160 megs, and here we are like up at almost 800. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a lot higher, but it's just the desktop environment we're using, and it's pretty standard for what we're doing. Um, 
I don't, I don't have Firefox running at the moment. It probably has some processes in the background, but in any case, so that's uh, the situation with memory. Now let's let's look at the disks. So we we can start out with df dash h just to see, see the file systems, and uh, see here you're going to see uh, this is our root file system running on the SD card, and it. So we have a boot and a root file system. Those are two different partitions on our SD card. Notice you don't see our uh, SATA SSDs here listed. So they're not mounted. They don't have an FS on them yet. So if you want to take a look at those, we can say LSBLK to list block devices. Hit enter and you see, we notice we have SDA and SDB. So SDA and SDB are SATA disk A and SATA disk B. So those are these two SATA SSDs. Um, so we're gonna format those later with a different OS though. And this one down here again is our SD card that has our OS on it. This is what we're booted off of. And it has two partitions. You can see media boot and root. So there we go. And uh, what else do we wanna check? Let's just check that SSH is running. It already is, I've already checked it. But just to show you, PS-EF and let's see here grep sshd so we're going to ss grep sshd that's the ssh daemon or the uh whoops so type out on my mini keyboard here let's remove that extra space and there we go so we can see sshd is running so it's running by default and by default the default password on this is odroid so the user we're logged in is is odroid and the password is odroid and the host name is Odroid. So that's default. You would want to change that if you were going to stick with this system. Um, I'm not. I'm going to wipe it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Now you can say IPA for, uh, there we go. You can see our IP address is uh, 192.168.3.236. And uh, let's see, we, we could also do IF, oops, IF config dash a I have config dash a and there we go this is an, an, just another tool this is a deprecated tool instead of the IP tool you, you can use IP uh, IF config and just list out your interfaces and we see uh, that yeah here's our IP address right there so um, any case we could just from the same network we could just SSH that IP address as odroid and we should be able to get in which we can I, I, I did verify that I'm not going to do that on this video but uh, that's how I was getting in when I tried to uh, set up uh, ZFS and, uh, and Samba. So ran into some issues, so I'm going to wipe the system anyways. But uh, that's about it. That's basically what I wanted to show you today. So, um, yeah, and again, if you wanted to pick up any of these things, the monitor, the mini keyboard here, the, the drives, the, the, the Odroid itself, just check the links in the description. And, uh, yeah, definitely stay tuned for that next video. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to set this up as a NAS. That's, that's definitely something we're planning. And, um, also, uh, you know, stay tuned for some of our other great videos too. We do a lot of stuff like single board computers, Raspberry Pis, uh, Linux, coding servers. Uh, we, we, we do coding videos in a lot of different languages. Um, uh, you know, we're doing like 3d printing, networking, all, all that great stuff. So, uh, you know, but between all that stuff, we have a lot of great content coming out and a lot of things you're not going to want to miss out on. So hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell icon too. Otherwise, YouTube won't let you know when we come out with a new video. And, uh, you know, you might want to give us a thumbs up, but more importantly, just leave a comment down below. Um, any comments, questions, criticisms, we do want to hear it. But um, yeah, also more importantly, if there's something you know that I don't know or something that I left out, leave a comment down below. Not just for me, but for the next person who comes along and watches this, just leave a comment down for uh, for their sake. And um, that's pretty much it for today. So hopefully you found this useful or, or maybe at least just interesting. Um, thanks for watching and we're going to see you guys on that next video.